Hey, I hope everyone is doing well. Seth from Glow Voltage here. In today's video, we are going to be checking out circuit breakers and seeing how well they perform for car audio applications and discuss how they're, they're different from fuses. So without uh, any delay, I'm going to go ahead and first off, I'm going to measure the internal resistance of each of these circuit breakers and determine yeah, well, at least get a good guess on what we should see and the results that we should be getting on our test bench. First up, we're going to be trying this um, 300 amp one. These are all from Amazon, um, all approximately the same price. They're all pretty inexpensive, so... Okay, so on the first one I'm reading about 0 0.927. <clears throat> on the second, 0.943, so very, very close in resistance on this one from the first. And on the third, 0.953. So if I had to make predictions on all of these, they're all very similar or very close to the same, um, right at about one milliohm. Next, I will go ahead and put them on a bench and measure each of, you know, each of their performance and determine what it takes to actually blow one of these circuit breakers as well as monitor the temperature. Okay, so I'm going to pull some current through the circuit breaker and we're going to watch its voltage drop. Now you can see we already have, we already have about 0.2 to 0.3 difference here between the two. Um, so we'll keep that in mind and I'm going to start the first test at a lower amount. Okay, so right now I'm pulling about 106 amps, 105 amps. And you can see the voltage drop has increased by, looks like it's about 0.13 and we're already about 0.2 to 0.3. So it's dropped a full tenth of a volt to maybe a little bit over a tenth of a volt, which is right on track with the numbers that we saw earlier. Um, looking at this, it looks like we have a little warm area where that is connecting. Oh no, it actually looks like it's inside after the connection. It is right there is the hottest point where the laser is shining. Um, but that's still not very hot. Uh, if you look up in the upper right, you'll see our max temperature is 86 on the screen. I don't know if you can actually see that. And pretty consistently at about a tenth of a volt more, which is right in line with the uh, one ohm or one milli ohm resistance that we saw earlier. So I'm going to put some charge in these batteries and we'll do the next test.
Okay, so this time I'm going to be pulling a lot more current through. Um, you would expect at 300 amps to see about 0.3 volts difference between these two. Um, but we're going to see how the circuit breaker itself reacts because it's rated for 300 amps. And that's really what we're testing out is to see the functionality and how it trips the circuit. So, going to go ahead and start. So it's actually pulling about 360 amps. Oh, and it tripped that quickly. Um, so that was a good sign, 360 amps. Let's check the temperature. And the temperature is only around 136. So um, as far as heat goes and breaking that, did better than a lot of the fuses we've tested for sure. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get these, throw just a little bit more charge in these, and then we're going to lower the amperage a little bit and see if it breaks right at 300 or how it does there. Okay, so I'm trying to get this charged up, and interestingly, I have my charger turned back on, so that's why the voltage over here is higher, but it is not unbreaking the current, so yeah, I had it. So this blue, and I'm resetting it. So, and there now it is going. So I don't know if it just took it a minute to cool down, but um, that was interesting, just something of note. Okay, so this time I'm gonna be pulling less current through. I'm gonna go ahead and start the test now. Okay, so now a little bit under 300. You can see right at the expected voltage drop, a little bit under 0.3, oh, and it did blow it again this time, and it looks like we got to about 145 degrees right there uh, where the laser is pointing. So now let's see if it reconnects when we pop this, oh, nope, and it's not even Letting me go, so it probably needs to cool down for a second. Let's see how long we have to wait. Okay, so now it did let me reset it. Oh, the load is still on. Okay, so there you go. That is how this one performed. Um, we'll go ahead and move along to the next. Okay, going to be doing a full load test. Um, the 280 amp on this circuit breaker now. So it was flickering for a second, but it didn't actually, oh, there it popped it. So that was interesting that it kind of flashed for a second first. Um, okay, so that one also broke um, at 280, taking the temperature now. It looks like it didn't even get to really over 80 degrees. Um, uh, yeah, it did. It got to about 99, it says, um, is our hottest point here. So uh, that one operated much the same as the last. Let's see if I can flip this and it worked. Oh, what is the one? But yeah, so I mean, that one came right back. Um, okay, so. Again, this one performed much the same as the other, and we'll go ahead and test the third, but I, I have a feeling it's gonna operate very much the same as these two have. Okay, final test of the night. Um, I need to get this off the charger. And I am expecting to see largely um, the same from this, just based on the internal resistance. So 
Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this one did end up glowing, and I will check the temperature now. Looks like on this one we have... It's not actually the wire, it's back in here that's hot. Um, like right there, and it is... About 107 degrees um, is the hottest we're getting. So it behaved much like the other ones. This one may have taken a, a little bit longer to um, actually pop, but uh, there you have. That's the results of load testing on all three of the circuit breakers. So next, let's discuss what this really means for a car audio application. So a breakdown of what we've learned doing this testing. Uh, I did compile a pro and con list. The pros are the circuit breakers are very easy to use. Um, they do act a lot faster than the fuses do, especially at the, the lower amperage. Um, they generate less heat overall than the fuses do. Uh, it's typical to see fuses at a couple hundred degrees before they actually blow. And, you know, of course, one of the main draws to circuit breakers are you know, if you trip them, you can just reset them and you don't need to replace a fuse. So it's as easy as just flipping a switch to get your system back on. Um, you know, some cons are compared to, you know, fuses at least, it's going to cost you more uh, for every one that you need. Um, they did not do the rated power, so um, they perform pretty similarly to cheap Amazon fuses in that aspect or a scar fuse where you can't actually pull their, you know, their rated current through them without, you know, causing it to, um, trip the circuit breaker. Um, you are going to lose more voltage versus a high quality fuse. And over here, I actually included a list of some comparisons using the, the numbers from previous testing. Um, if you actually watched the video earlier during the testing, I gave a breakdown of the voltage drop we were seeing, and it's very, very accurate uh, versus what we would expect using the micro-ohm meter that tests down to one one millionth of an ohm. Um, so as you can see, you'll, you'll lose less even using a generic Amazon fuse by about 0 0.09, so not a terrible amount of voltage gained over, you know, a generic Amazon fuse, but... You know, it's getting pretty substantial if you compare it to something like a Sky High Car Audio Ceramic Fuse or one of the fiberglass fuses that we offer is, you know, almost negligible at that amount of current. So you're going to lose more voltage and uh, circuit breakers have a very bad stigma in, you know, most car audio groups. So you are going to catch some shit if, you know, you get or if you post that you're using these circuit breakers. So... You know, you're going to have to deal with that, but all in all, you know, I would, I would almost recommend just getting one of these circuit breakers if, you know, if the options were between the circuit breakers and, a, you know, a cheap Amazon fuse, but um, ideally, you know, what you should be doing is, you know, just investing a little bit more. Um, I know sky high ceramic fuses aren't too expensive and the fiberglass fuses that we offer, you can actually get you know, four packs of them for around 20 bucks. So not bad at all there, especially not compared to the cost of a single circuit breaker. So, um, you know, if, if every bit of voltage is important to you, I'd say go with the fuse. But if you just have like a, you know, a smaller amp, like you're running a two, 3000 watt amp, you, you'll probably be okay with a breaker, but you are going to be dealing with some voltage loss. So just be ready for that. Uh, if you have any questions or if you'd like to see any additional testing, just let us know in the comments below and 
yeah, we will try to get to it.